You've got your quilt made, you've got it quilted, now you're ready for binding. I'm Carolyn Cullen and McCormick, the inventor of the Add a Quarter, and I have a new tool called Add a Binding, and I would like to demonstrate to you how easy it is to put on binding using this new tool called Add a Binding. So the Add a Binding is the only tool that you're gonna need to do your binding, and here are some of the features that are built into this tool. With this length, I always fold my fabric in force so you can cut out either a two and a half inch strip or a two and a quarter inch strip. That's the size of binding most quilters use. So that's what these two sides, these two marks are, are for the two and a half or two and a quarter. The other feature on this binding is this 45 degree angle. So after you get your strips made, you're gonna trim this off and then trim these off at a 45. So when you put your two strips together, then everything is gonna match up perfectly. The other feature that's really nice is this 45. So what you're going to do is you're gonna mark your angle on your fabric, or excuse me, your binding, before you sew it on. So at the end, it's already marked, you know where you're gonna sew. The other feature is, and you notice we have a two and a half, two and a quarter. Everything's two and a half, two and a quarter. The other thing is, is after you get your binding on, then you want to fold it back and trim it. So here we again, two and a half, two and a quarter. These slits that we have are for making the binding folded in in half. And I'll demonstrate to you later on how easy that is to do. So step one is I folded my fabric in half and I pressed it. And now what I'm going to do is I've, I've figured out how many strips I'm going to need. And I decided I want to have a two and a half strip inch wide. So I'm just going to line up my two and a half inch on my ruler and then cut my strips. So just cut as many as I'm gonna need and then we're ready to move on to the next step. So now I have all my strips cut. So I'm gonna unfold it and then take the add a binding, just place it on the line or line it up on the bottom. So this is gonna be my step two. And you notice I have the salvage edge here. For step number three, just gonna trim this off, but don't start here because you're gonna nick, nick your blade. So start in the middle and just trim this off, just like this. You're getting rid of that. So when you piece your pieces together, you've got that 45 inch cut, or 45 degree angle, I should say. And then we're just gonna trim these off. And so then when you're ready, then these are gonna just all bind together. Here's an extra little tip that I always do when I'm using a solid fabric. Sometimes when I sew my strips together, I've sewed them at a different angle. So I always just put a little piece of tape on what will be my right sides. And I do it on both sides so then when I've sewn it together, I know. So I've got my tape and I know now this is gonna be my right side. So I just take my two right sides I can get it to get off. And you see how this will match up now? So I've got my two right sides. I fold it over just like this. And you see how it just might, lines up? Now I'm ready to stitch that all my strips together. And each one will be right because I have my tape, so that's my right side. So you can see by trimming this tip off on each one of these pieces, when you sew it together, you're not having to deal with any dog ears. Everything's ready to go. So I've already pressed it. You can either press going one direction or open your seams, whatever you prefer. The next step is, is we wanna do a straight edge. So I'm just taking one end of my strip, lining this up, trimming this off. Now, since I'm doing a two and a half inch strip, I'm gonna use a two and a half inch angle. You see how this just angles up here? And there's, it's back just a little bit. But the reason for that, I use, use a graphite pencil or just a regular pencil. When I draw my line, you see how it goes exactly to that edge. And this is what you're gonna sew on when we're putting the two ends of the binding together. Okay, now we've got our strips cut. This is where these slits are gonna come into play. So I always sew, or excuse me, fold my binding over 10 to 12 inches, doesn't really matter. Use steam on my iron and just press it to start. This is a two and a half inch strip. 
So we're gonna use the two and a half inch slot that we have, fold this through, and try not to step on your binding. And then I just kind of line it up on here. I'm gonna come down just a little bit more and start. Then just take your iron and slide it. Pull it up. Line it. Bring your iron and slide it. And you can see how easy it is to fold your binding in half. Try to keep the ruler straight as it goes through. Okay, we're just gonna keep going with the wider slits. It'll just come right over where you have it pressed. So we have this all done. Now we're gonna move on to the next step. So we're gonna start with the end of the binding that we've marked with the pencil in previous steps. And what I always do, you wanna leave probably a 10 to 12 inch tail I'll put my binding on, and then I always try to go down to the bottom to make sure I'm not going to start or end at a corner where I have it pieced. So I have it lined up. Let's line this up like this. Leave my tail. And I always use my walking foot when I'm putting on the binding. So I have my tail, I have my quarter inch, and I'm going to start sewing. And also what's helpful for me is to use my needle down. So I just line it up and sew it on. So we're going to go all the way to the end. And then when we get to the end, I'll show you how to make the turn. Okay, so we're getting close to the corner. So we're just going to keep going. And then what you need to do is you need to stop a quarter inch away from the edge. And then I twist the quilt around, do reverse and back off. Pull it out. And then this is how I make my 45. I just fold it over just like this and have it lined up and then just start sewing it back on. And that's how you're gonna do every one of your corners. So we've got it all sewed. This is the end that we started with. So just have this nice and flat. This is the end that we're gonna trim off. So we're just gonna fold this back like this. And since we're doing a two and a half inch binding, we're just gonna line this up and we have a two and a half inch mark right here. So just line this up, just like this. And take the scissors and cut it straight across. Okay, so now we're ready to do our pieces together. So this is the top of the binding. And this is, so you're gonna have right sides together. And do you see how there's your line? We're just going to pin this so it doesn't move. And I usually just use three pins just to keep it in line. Okay. So do you see how we did that? This is the right side. This is the right side. Right sides together. We're going to stitch across this now. So now we have our extra tails. We just have the quilt kind of bunched up, all you're going to do is line this up and stitch on the line. And I just pull my pins as I go. So this is going to give you your 45 inch degree uh, for trimming. So now I've sewed across on the line. All I'm going to do is pick, take a pair of scissors and trim to a quarter inch. And when you get this done, do you see how the binding just falls into place? So I will take this over to the iron, press this down, line it up, sew it into place, and your binding's finished. See how simple that was?
Thanks for watching the video on how to use the add a binding. You see how easy it is to put binding on and it's the only tool that you're gonna need to put on binding. If you're interested in purchasing, you can do so at uh, CM Designs online. We also do Facebook, Instagram, or check your local quilt shop.